Plugging children in, developing them while they're young. Yeah. So, uh, I understand ladies' groups, they want to have ladies' things with no kids. I understand men's groups, they want to have men's stuff with no kids. I understand uh, drawing the line and saying, you can't do this if you're not part of youth group because this is a youth event. And I understand all of that. But then, if we're constantly excluding the kids from everything that the church does, how are we expecting them to get excited about anything the church does? They've got children's church. They got BBS. That's there. They got junior camp, friend. Church is every Sunday. It's every Sunday night. It's every Wednesday night. It's every fellowship meeting. The church operates as a whole, and sometimes we can get so caught up in boundaries between departments that we're really quick to exclude the children. I want my children with me when we do things. We're going to go on a men's mission trip. I want my son to go on a men's mission trip. Why? Because I want to rub his shoulders with godly, apostolic men. You know what that is? That's discipleship. Fishing. Eating. Spending time together. Hanging out. Going to dinner. Going mini golfing. And that's not like fucking discipleship, right? No, but I'm going to get there in a second. Uh, that was not an extensive list, by the way. Uh, or an exclusive list. <laughs> you can go, see if you can go back to your pastor. Pastor, I was trying to watch so we can go mini golfing. That's a great discipleship program. I love it. Let's do it. And so that's not what I'm saying. But what I am saying is you got to spend time with people. If you expect you to disciple people on Sunday mornings, you might get a faithful church attendee, but you're not going to get a disciple out of that effort. They're, they're going to learn some things. But to really make disciples, it comes down to getting intimate and getting personal and getting sacrificial and spending time. I love what he said. I'm going to spend a Saturday. I'm going to, I'm going to sacrifice my time and be around people. And I'm not going to do it with a chip on my shoulder. And I wish I was doing anything about my mother's versus Zora. I wish I was doing anything but throwing a ball to this kid. No, but being there with all of your heart. Right? It keeps coming back to genuinity. Being sincere. Is that word genuinity? I don't like it. I don't know if it's a real word or not. Somebody correct me on the verge of it. It isn't. Uh, but check it out. Brother Cabrera, uh, when I was a uh, junior youth, he started this thing called Junior Conquerors. And this might be something you can talk to your pastor about. <laughs> we had a fellowship in our group at the time. It was section. I don't remember what section we were. But he got with the uh, pastors, and they had a, a, a fellowship meeting every, what, like six months or so. It was a twice a year thing, and uh, it was a big children's crusade. It was a big children's church, and it was inviting all the churches in our surrounding area, and they would bring van loads and bus loads and car loads of their kids. I'm not talking youth. You've got their stuff, and I, just, I know I talked about life just a little bit ago. But it was for our junior youth. And so parents would bring kids, uh, Sunday school teachers would bring kids, bus drivers would drive kids to this church. It was a planned thing. It takes a little bit more planning than just one Sunday school teacher. And so talk to your pastor about it. It sounds like something interesting to you. And they collaborated a kids' church, much like what we're going to have tonight. So if you're feeling tired, I encourage you, uh, take a nap somewhere. Because if you're tired tonight, uh, then you're going to end up with a muscle or like... Uh, going to the hospital or something. Because we are going to get crazy tonight. If you're still like, I'm going to sit down way too much in this workshop. We're going to give you a chance to run it off tomorrow. You're going to want to sit down all day. Trust me. And if that's your case, you don't want to come to the kids men, uh, best of kids men songs in my session tomorrow because I, you will not be sitting down. We will be dancing like monkeys for an hour. And so uh, you won't want to, uh, well, you will want to miss that if you have another session. I'm not shamelessly plugging my session. But check this out. The point is, is there was a kids church, a centralized plan location, and all these different kids came together. You know what that is? That's a youth conference. And these kids were experiencing that together. It's like junior camp. It's important. Junior camp's important. We have, and I say this, not bias, okay? Southern California has the best junior camp on the map. I'm 
I'm just saying that I did not find my opinion. I mean it. I think that SoCal puts together the best junior camps. We might lose a kid here and there. Right? I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Play it. I'm just playing. But kids get the Holy, dozens of kids get the Holy Ghost every single year. I mean, we got most of the Holy Ghost kids laying in the altars for hours on end. I mean, it is an impactful junior camp. You know what those type of events are? Those play into discipleship. And a lot of times, I, you know, I've seen it, you got to use discernment on stuff like this. But sometimes we could get standoffs without sending less kids to junior camp. And, and those type of things. And I understand it can get costly and all these different things. But listen, those are those are moments. Those are milestones. Everybody say milestones. Milestones. Discipleship, unlike the uh, ideology where you would have a discipleship class, right? And I'm all for discipleship class or a new commerce class. I think that they're important, they're essential to get somebody acquainted with the church and with the doctrine and all of these. That's wonderful, that's great. I love discipleship classes. But once a discipleship course is finished, it doesn't mean discipleship is finished. Discipleship is not, and write this down, discipleship is not a destination. Discipleship is a direction. Discipleship is not a destination. Discipleship is directional. It's someone who's learned and experienced, been there, done that, received instruction from someone above them, received inspiration and revelation from the Holy Ghost, and then passing it on to somebody else to live out. And guess what? Discipleship never stops. Who here has got a pastor? Guess what I got? I'm a pastor. I've got a pastor. Discipleship never stops. Because what is discipleship? Discipleship is the process of following. I got it. Discipleship is the process of learning from the teacher, learning from the master. I don't want to ever stop learning. And these kids, we need to have milestones and noticeable points in that direction that they're taking to make sure they're on the right track. We've got to make sure that's what discipleship is. That's our uh, responsibility as disciples. We've got to make sure that they're on track to discipleship. Amen. And how do we measure that? We measure that through milestones. We measure that through attendance to Sunday school. We measure that by, are they bringing their Bibles to Sunday school? We measure that by, are they learning how to find Scripture in the Bibles that they're bringing? And they know how to read Scripture in the Bibles that they're bringing. And they know the order of the books of the Bible. Those are milestones that we can measure. What about, um, what about offerings? It's going to be milestones. Man, they gave an offering today. They never bring an offering. That is exciting. That's awesome. You know what you need? You know what? They're not, they're not going to be paying any bills. The church is going to be paying any bills from Sunday school offering. This is not. What do we do? Why do we take up offering in Sunday school? Is it to pay for snacks the next Sunday? Is it to make sure the electricity stays on in the classroom? Is the pastor coming to knock on your door? All right, pay up your portion. That's all I got. All I got 15 cents this Sunday. All right, well, I'm going to have to do without the AC the next Sunday. <laughs> yeah. Pick it up. You're way below your quota. Praise God. My Sunday school offering don't pay for nothing. In our church, anyway, I Why do we even take up offering in Sunday school? Discipleship. We're teaching them to give to the house of God. And it doesn't matter the amount, we rejoice if they bring a penny. Where you go, you brought offering. Yeah. Why? Because we're teaching them something that they need to grow in. They're not going to be thousand dollar a month givers at seven year old, at two, two second grade class. But if we can instill in them those concepts to be a cheerful giver with a scent, and we can maintain that 
as they grow, then they're going to be givers as they grow. And it's, 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 it's an ongoing process. And so discipleship is not a destination. It is directional in nature. Amen. And so we've got to make sure that they're on track. They're in the right direction. They come into the sense They pray their Bible. Do they know how to use that Bible? Are they giving you the offering? Are they learning verses? That's a milestone. Memory, memory verse. Verse memorization. That's, those are milestones, right? Um, how about when that kid brings a family member or brings another child to Sunday school? Is that a milestone? That's a milestone. When kids are bringing other kids. I forgot to mention this on the effective outreach. Uh, but you know what the most effective outreach is? Is when kids in your class or in your kids' church are inviting other kids to come to Sunday school. That's the most effective outreach method. It beats anything that you or I can do as outsiders, but when an insider in those kids' world is excited about Sunday school, and they invite, that's the most effective method of outreach right there. It's when kids get pumped up about Sunday school and up and by somebody else. And so, uh, discipleship is it's a process, it's directional, and so it's an ongoing thing. <laughs> so I want to go to a couple of scriptures. Then Peter said unto them, Amen. Amen. I believe in teacher. No, I, I'm being facetious. I know it's almost 3 o'clock. Some of y'all haven't eaten lunch yet. Can I tell you this? Acts 238 is the most fundamental basic verse of the God. I cut you guys off card. I get it. I'm not, I'm not judging. I don't want you to feel like I'm being unseen. But if it's being presented that way, then those kids are going to recognize an essential milestone. So what we've got to do is we've got to take a step back and rewind in our 30-year veteran riot of the faith mind as a disciple who has progressed in that right direction for so many years, we've got to rewind back to the time when it was first taught to us. And remember that these essentials are so essential that I can't skim over them. I can't just briefly touch on it. You know, sometimes in adult church, we can say, we all know the story. You know how preachers do that sometimes. They'll like briefly touch on the story of Rahab. And they have a certain point that they want to get to. And so they just skip with the whole story. And they say, we all know the story. They just get to the point. You can't do that in Sunday school. Because they're at that place where they need the basics. They need the foundation. They need the fundamentals. And we need to make it exciting to them. Because those milestones have to be met. Alright? And so Acts 38, let's say it like we're wanting somebody to get it for the first time. You're ready? Here we go. Does that sound like something you want to learn? Yeah. <laughs> and so making those basic milestones Exciting. That's why we rejoice with the sit offering. That's why we rejoice over the kid that just showed up in church. And you're going to take 10 seven. All right, you brought their Bible offering, their memory verse, a friend. And sometimes it can become so routine. All right, you got four points today. You marked it off. No. If somebody didn't bring an offering, somebody didn't bring a Bible, somebody didn't bring a friend, like, oh, okay. Moving on. How about you, Johnny? What did you bring? Now, you know what we do? We have to, when, we, when we're doing tallies like that, we're, we're listening to what they brought to Sunday school, we make a big deal if they just brought themselves. <laughs> no, we really do. Said, all right, did you bring your Bible? No. Nope. Did you bring your offering? No, not today. Do you know, did you learn the universe? No, not today. Oh. Are you here? And you make it exciting. Why? Because you want to make it important. The fact that they're there. Why? Because that's a milestone. You're never going to have a chance to disciple them fully 
unless they're there. And unless you're spending time with them. So make a big deal out of those milestones. What did Jesus do? He preached to the masses. Yes. He spent time in personal prayer and devotion. Yes. He went to church and ministered. Yes. But it could be said that the greatest impact that he made throughout the Gospels was when he was with people one on one and in intimate settings and in living rooms and in back alleys and across dining room tables. Come on. Not everybody's going to be behind a pulpit, but did you know that sometimes the greatest pulpit that some people will ever experience? Is a dining table. Jesus spent more time eating with people, recorded in scripture, eating with people than even being in the synagogues. I know he was in the synagogues every time he could. He was Jesus, he went to church, okay. Jesus went to church. But recorded in the gospels, he was with people one on one more. Why? Because that's how discipleship happens. The disciples had three and three years with Jesus, a little over three years with Jesus, to be the founders of the New Testament church, and they got three year crash course. You know what it took? It took them, them to eat, sleep, live, follow Jesus. They were with him all the time. And so we feel, I'm gonna get I'm gonna get kind of rough here for a second, so bear with me, but this is the God's truth. If we feel like we can punch a time clock on Sunday morning and say, all right, I'm, not, I'm here at 9.30. All right, clock's out, 11.30. And we feel like we can make disciples in an hour and a half to two hours of our day, of our week, and have kids become teenagers and on fire for God, and those teenagers make it through that rough patch called adolescence and high school, and make it into young adulthood, and make it through university, and make it through college, and going into the world, and going into after, after their jobs, and they can make it on two hours we put into them on Sunday morning, friend. We are sorely mistaken. We got to get, we got to get personal. We got to get personal. I'm not telling us to spend an hour a day at a kid's house. That's not what I'm saying at all. I'm saying we got to measure milestones to make sure they're on the right track. And when they're not on the right track, we take the responsibility as disciple makers to put, to teach them how to be on the right track. And when they don't know how, we give them the tools. I don't know how to pray. Well, let me teach you. Let me teach you how to pray. We're going to have a little session like that uh, right before our kids' church tonight. But we just got to spend some time with these kids. He explained things on a deep and profound level, one on one. He gave them clear and specific instructions and explanation of parables, not in front of the crowd, but one on one. And so we've got to take advantage of one on one opportunities. That's why I think that in pre service or pre Sunday school, when the kids are playing or eating their snack, that's not the time for teachers to be in a holy huddle in the corner on their phones. Or talking amongst themselves, or in another part of the church, doing whatever they're doing. You know what? That's the perfect time for. That's the perfect time for discipleship. Right. Sitting across the table from a child and asking them questions, and laughing with them, telling them jokes, and getting close to them, building trust and rapport. Why? Because you've got a place to take them. Because discipleship ultimately is destinational, and there's only one destination. It's not when they get a certificate of completion. It's not when they get a baptismal certificate. It's not even when, when they receive the Holy Ghost. It's not even when they become a minister. You know what the destination is? It's heaven. That's the destination of discipleship. It's heaven. It doesn't stop till we're up there. It doesn't stop till we're with Jesus in heaven for eternity. And so, what does that mean? That means that I've got to direct and take responsibility of the direction of these children. I know I can't make their decisions for them, but I'm going to present those milestones to them and get them there. And when they've attained it, I'm going to get them to the next one, to the next one, to the next one. And so discipleship is so important. Brother Cabrera, I'm going to go back to the junior conference meetings that he had uh, when he had, when he had kids lead the worship. We had kids do puppet shows. The kids would be the ones leading the service. It wasn't a kids' church for the kids. The kids from different churches would bring it. We would do stick 
trial. Does anybody remember state trials back in the day? We did state trials. I'll never forget it. As a 12 year old young preteen kid, I looked at the mirror, called me up one day, called my dad up, and asked him first, and asked him to talk to me, and said, Brother Tyler Marsh, I would like for you to preach our next junior conqueror's meeting in Strathmore, California. I preached my first message, invited as a guest speaker on the flyer, dude, at 12 years old. Was it because I was good? I was that anointed of God? 12 year old preacher, how old you? No, it wasn't because I was so amazing and so anointed and just this mighty man of God. It was because there was somebody taking responsibility for a discipleship process of a child that they saw potential in. And they wanted to give them some milestones. They wanted to open some doors for them. Woo! Glory. I'm not done. Let's try again. What's the rest of Acts chapter 2, verse 38? It goes into verse 39. For the promise is unto you and to your children and to all that are on. Even as many as the Lord our God shall call. Okay? What's the promise talking about? It's talking about the Holy Ghost. It's talking about salvation. And so if the promise is for our children, guess what else is for our children? What came before the promise then? A commission came. Jesus' command, go and make disciples. You get to Jerusalem. First of all, you got to get to the place of salvation, which is Jerusalem. You can't give what you ain't got. Don't be trying to disciple somebody. Oh, I'm so glad I said that because it reminded me of something Brother Cabrera said. He said, don't try to be this like high and mighty person above the kids and like, bless God. There's another thing that I can't stand. And, and you can have an orderly Sunday school, but it's not going to be effective. If you just treat the kids like you're the boss, they might obey you, they might be good. They might clean up after themselves, but if all you're giving them is instructions for the next day, and you're not making a connection with them on a personal level, you'll have an orderly Sunday school, and those kids are going to get through the program, and they're not going to be disciple. They're just going to be obedient little children. Man, if I got if I got to correct a kid from time to time. Because we're having too, we're having so much fun, and that kind of takes it overboard. Or he gets excited, and he's kind of that excitement is lingering into other things that we need to be taken back with. It. I'd rather disciple that kid and correct him than to for him to just follow in line with the rest of the cattle to the end of the destination, and then they're hammered, and then <laughs> they fulfill their purpose. They got to Sunday morning. Nah. I'm interested in hamburger. I'm interested in prize cattle. Yeah. This is this is this child, he's from my church. This child, I taught his Sunday school class. This child, you should have saw his home uh, when we went and got him on a bus, but now look what the Lord's done. I want my kids to be testimonies and set ours like this. Uh, I want my children, my Sunday school class, and our Sunday school. I want them to be testimonies on the block. You know what? I'm not just going to put you through a program like they would with a public education. This is an internal program. This is something with an internal impact. And I'm going to disciple these children and hit every milestone and teach them every doctrine and love them until Jesus comes back and we make it our own. So before there was a promise, he said, For the promise is unto you and your children, and all that are far off. So as the Holy Ghost will come, before the Holy Ghost came, before the promise came, the commission was given. So, today, as we close this segment, we're going to have kids first tonight. So come ready to get inspired. We're going to have a wonderful time. Tomorrow, there's going to be a lot of nuts and bolts. We're going to get inspired. We're going to get excited. This is so important. I hope you hear me well. And in all of that, in all of that, we've got to 
understand that before the promise comes for these children, I've got a commission to obey. The command was, go to Jerusalem. Get the power. Once you get the power, I want you to go and make disciples. Anybody got the power? Anybody got the promise? All right, we've received the promise. But now, there's a commission. And I love the sign that's out here in this parking lot. It's a beautiful sign. I don't know whose vision it was. Pastor Will is sure he's a soul winner, a visionary. You honor this church, their bishop, their pastor. You got a sign out in the parking lot. As you exit, it says you are now entering your mission field. We can't keep our missions overseas. We can't keep our missions overseas. We can't keep our discipleship in the classroom. We've got to recognize that every child in my class, God has given to me to disciple. God gave you those kids. And it's our responsibility to disciple them. But here's the beautiful thing, by the way. If we can get them in the right direction. As the promise was generational, the commission is generational. Because the commission came before the promise. As long as the Holy Ghost is still getting poured out, there's another generation of the church that needs to go and make disciples. I want my son, Jackson David Hodge, I want him to make disciples. And how is he going to make disciples? How is he going to be a soldier? Because I was that example for him. I was his disciple. I was filled with intention to teach my son certain things. The Bible says, by their fruits, you shall know them. Right? This is what's so amazing. In Proverbs chapter 20, in verse number 11. Oh, I'm over my time. You should have said something, motherfucker. <sighs> Proverbs chapter 20, verse number 11 says this. Even a child is known by his doings. Whether his work be pure and whether it be right. Even a child is known by his doing. Jesus taught by their fruit, you shall know them. Oh God. Help us not be so quickly to excuse certain behaviors of children because, well, they're just kids. No friend. That's a soul that needs discipleship. And who's going to teach them? The church is going to teach them. By the way, I would go over this my taboo lesson session tomorrow. If you would come so I can get intimidated and give like, please. Check this out. I've had kids. My family's had kids in Sunday school in Lake Isabella when we were first starting out having a home mission church. We literally had to teach them what the odor it was. We had to teach them the process of taking a shower. Sometimes we get satisfied with getting them up at the fire of sin, but they still have the mud on them. There's a whole culture that surrounds some of the places that we're taking people out of them that they need deliverance from. They need deliverance from. And who's going to show them the way? It doesn't need to be excused. It needs to be modeled. And it needs to be taught by the help of the Holy Ghost. Why? Because that's the commission. But the new thing that comes out discipleship is when we get it straight, it multiplies. Discipleship, when done correctly, it's not a rock star soul winner in a church that just gets a bunch of people in church. And that's the only addition that your church ever sees. Discipleship done right multiplies. Because what one person was putting into a bunch of people, a bunch of people are starting to put into a bunch more people. Because it's a process, it's a direction given. And if we can all get on track, every single one, I'm, I'm saying by the end of this month, wait, it is the end of the month. <laughs> Tomorrow, by the end of this next coming up month, by the end of May, if you will have the heart of a disciple learn, and you will make clear milestones and get excited when those milestones are met and help these kids hit those milestones, not just on Sunday mornings, but throughout the week, you're calling them. Friend, if you ain't got your kids this phone number, you're not a disciple. You're not. 
You gotta, you gotta have your number in your phone. If you're a Sunday school teacher, you need to have your kids' number in your phone. I don't expect you to call every day. I don't expect you to be a best friend. But man, it's gonna be more than Sunday. My wife has to say, please come so I stop right with you. Just kidding. My wife has to say, Sunday school happens more than just on Sundays. Sunday school is way more than just Sundays. It is discipleship. And it takes effort from us every single day to be in prayer, to be in preparation, and to be connected with those people that God's given us to be disciples. And when they get it, they're going to be disciples. And they're going to be old, gray, uh, G. That all these hundreds of Sunday school kids are going to look to and say, I don't remember when she taught my Sunday school class. No, seriously, we're laughing, but we have those icons today. Because somebody took it as their responsibility to be a disciple. You have that opportunity right now as we stand this afternoon. You have that opportunity right now. For all the kids in your class, all the kids on your bus, all the kids in your neighborhoods, you've got an opportunity to be a, a legend. That should be our motivation, by the way. I ain't pursuing a plaque in heaven. I'm not pursuing a star in my crown. That's not, that's not my motivation. But if I'll obey the command, go, make disciples, teach all nations, baptize them. Okay, milestones. They get the promise. Because I modeled the commission, they are now following the commission. The process of multiplication starts happening in our churches. Oh, God. I read a book not so long ago called The Starfish and the Spider. Have you ever heard the book from Starfish and the Spider? I think I might have gotten out of a recommendation from Brother Wayne, actually. The Starfish and the Spider. You can cut the head off of a spider and it'll die. You cut an arm off of a starfish, it'll wiggle a little bit, but it's just going to grow another arm. Upon this rock, I'm going to build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against you. Know why Jesus Christ is the head. And the beautiful thing is, Satan can't cut the head off the church. He can't kill the church, but we are his arms. We are extensions from the body. We are the ones reaching out. And if the devil cuts one of us off, guess what? Somebody's got to step up and take his place and keep reaching. Why? Because we're the church. We're the church that can't be defeated. Oh, come on. We're the church triumphant. But what makes us the church triumphant? Because we've got a tie on? Because we go to church and pay our tithes? Or is missing to know? We don't miss us the church triumphant as we go against hell every single day and we come out victorious and we're winning souls. We're bringing people through the Holy Ghost. Thank you.